Hi, welcome to the Mathemagic channel. Today we're doing 10 riddles that'll stump most people, even math nerds. I'd love for you to do those with me, so let's try them out. Okay, so I'll pause it here. This is a pretty classic question. Um, I hope you managed to do this one. There are nine small squares, and then you have some two by two squares, and there's four of those. Like there's one on the left, one on the right, one on the bottom left, one on the bottom right, and then there's a big three by three square. So it's nine plus four plus three, and then nine plus four plus three is 14. So I'm pretty confident that's the answer. Notice also that it's three squared plus two squared plus one squared. So in these kinds of questions, you can use uh, square numbers. So that's pretty cool. So it's, it's just the sum of uh, the first three square numbers, one squared, two squared, and three squared. It's a cool question to start. <music> Okay, now for question two. All right, so for this one, Lisa was six years old, her sister was three, she's half her age. And so what's really important here is the differential between the two ages and the difference is three years old. So at, the question says, if Lisa is 40 today, how old is Lucy? Now Lucy is the younger child, so it's three years less. So 37, right? At least I think so. <laughs> So the sum is adding and the product is multiplying and we're looking for a, tri a triple or a triple, a set of numbers of three numbers, which when you add them is equal to when you multiply them. And, and the thing is, if you think about numbers like 10, 11, 12, those are gonna be like so much bigger when you multiply them than when you add them. So you have to go with really small numbers. So the first thought is one, two, three, right? One plus two plus three is six and one times two times three is six. And those two triplets are equal. However, if you had like two, three, four, two plus three plus four is nine and two times three times four, well, that's 12 times four, which is, no, wait, six times four, which is 24. And immediately you see that the multiplication is way, way bigger than the addition. So the only possible answer is one, two, and three. Um, hopefully you got that one as well. <laughs> Thank you. 
this is pretty interesting for these kinds of problems because when you think about the structure of the four, you can turn the four into a nine uh, or nothing really. Like you can turn it into an H, but that's not a number. So there's not much you can do with the four. The six, however, can turn into an eight if you're to add a matchstick, but then you can't really take a matchstick from the four. And the six can also turn into a zero if you're to like shift um, a match upwards. It could turn into a five as well if you were to take the bottom bottom left match out. So you got a few options with the six. So let's look, let's explore the zero options. So if we shift one matchstick, a zero plus four is four. That seems like pretty good. Um, changing the six into an eight, we can't really do anything. Taking like a matchstick from the four to give to the six because the four will just turn into nothing. Turning the, the six into a five, five plus four. We could do five plus four is nine. So actually I'm not too sure about this one. Either zero plus four is four or five plus four is nine. Uh, I think they might both be acceptable. Um, let me know in the comments below, um, you know, what you think about this one. Okay, so there's two answers for that one. That's cool, that's cool, it's a nice question. This one's bugging me a little bit. I don't have it. <laughs> Do you guys have it? If you have it, put it in the comments below. Um, yeah, I wouldn't get the answer to that question. I'm thinking divide times plus minus none of the operators work and then smaller than, greater than, that doesn't really make a difference. So there's no symbol that I can think about to put between the two numbers. I'm not too sure about this one. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you get it. A decimal point. Oh yes, a decimal point to be smaller than eight but bigger than seven. Okay, full question, full question. This reminds me of the what weighs more, a kilo of feathers or a kilo of lead. And a kilo is equal to a kilo. And here, 16 ounces is going to be equal to a pound. So I'm, I'm pretty sure these are equal. So two items added together equal 150. The price differential is 100. If the pair of shoes was $50, the hoodie would be 150. Then that's 200. That's too big. So you need to look at two smaller numbers that add up to 150. So 25 and 125 seems reasonable. Uh, and that's 100 more. So I would say 25 and 125 here. <laughs>
think these are upside down. <laughs> so <laughs> there's an 86, and after the 86, we have 87, 88, 89. So I'm pretty sure this is 86, 87. <laughs> Tricky, tricky. This one's not making a whole lot of sense to me because in US money we have one cent, uh, I think we have a two cent coin, I'm not too sure. There's definitely a five cent, 10 cent, and then a 25 cent. So 25 cent is a quarter, and then the 10 cent is a, is a dime, and the five cent is a nickel. So we're saying make 30 cents with two coins. If you use the tens, you need three coins because it'll be 30 cents. So your only option is to go 25 and five. That's your only option, there's no other choice. However, it says one of them is not a nickel. Well, the quarter is not a nickel, right? So I guess 25 and five is good, right? What, what do you think? Do you want to put it in the comments below? <laughs> It's just, uh, you know, the, the wording could be confusing here, but it's, it's, uh, it's decent enough to say definitely not a nickel, but one of them can be, right? So... get that one this is a very specific shape it's not random at all when it says even math nerds I think math nerds will do this one relatively well because it's Pascal's triangle and we use it a lot in combinatorics um, and when we do probabilities so Pascal's triangle works like this you'll see there's like uh, ones on each side and then for the center part you'll add the one and the one to get the two and then for the three you'll add the one and the two and then the two and the one will give you the other three and then the one and the three give you a four and the three and the three give you a six and then the three and the one give you a four. Actually, the first few rows of Pascal's triangle are also like your expansions like a squared, two ab and b squared or the next row is one, three, three, one. It's the a cubed, a plus b cubed expansion. The next row is to the power four, so one, four, six, four, one. So if you know the triangle, this is a slam dunk. The next row is one, five, 10, 10, five, one. So if you know this triangle, this will be super, super easy. But if you don't, you can add the three and the three to generate the number below, which is definitely a six. It is Pascal's triangle, yes. Usually presented as a triangle. Here's presented in hexagons, but it's pretty cool. put your answers in the comments below but as I mentioned if if you know Pascal's triangle it's one five ten ten five one so you know that that's quite useful here. <laughs> uh, all right very cool I hope you enjoyed doing this thanks for joining me on these questions remember to like and subscribe to the Mathematic channel I'll be doing more of these because I just enjoy solving math riddles so <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed jo joining me on this journey and I shall see you on the next one bye bye